Welcome to Nesora's Regional Anesthesia Case Management Series. Today we're going to discuss the use of forearm nerve blocks as complete anesthesia option for index finger fracture in a 16 years old boy. Here we can see a displaced index finger fracture and for anesthesia we planed a median nerve block at the forearm and a radial nerve block just above the elbow. And for both of these we plan of using 4 to 5 milliliters of 2% lidocaine. Here's the boy in a supine position and here we can see the splinted finger. Clearly the fracture is a couple of days old and here we can see also a needle track after the median nerve block below the elbow. The reason why we chose to do a median nerve block is because we do need anesthesia of the palmar surface of the hand and at the same time not only does it provide anesthesia to the palmar surface of the index finger but at the same time should a surgeon touch anything more medial the boy will not be terrified or being able to feel the touching of the hand even though that's not where the surgery is going to take place. Here's the boy now in a slightly supine position and here we can see the elbow flexed and a needle track from the radial nerve block above the elbow. The reason why we do need a radial nerve block and we chose to do it above the elbow is because when you performed a radial nerve block above the elbow then you're going to get also a motor relaxation and the motor relaxation of the wrist is very important so that the boy does not move during the pinning of the wrist during the procedure. At the same time the radial nerve will block will also provide anesthesia to the posterior surface of the finger and in the hand. Now the choice of the lidocaine 2% is because it will result in a quick onset of anesthesia but only with two to three hours of duration and once properly performed the radial nerve block above the elbow will result in a wrist drop as you could see in this particular image. This is a cross-sectional view of the median nerve at the forearm. Here we can see the median nerve and its sandwich in between the superficial flexors and the deep flexors of the digits. Going back to the ultrasound image, here's the median nerve here and again these are the superficial flexors of the digits and these are the deep flexors of the digits. We can see how they correspond on anatomical cross-section. And these are the deep flexors of the digits. Here we can see how they correspond to the anatomical cross-section. Let's take a look at now at the reverse ultrasound anatomy animation. Here we see Nesora's proprietary tool where the ultrasound blends into the ultrasound anatomy reverse illustration. And here we can see on the ultrasound image the flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitorum superficialis and underneath the flexor profundus muscles. And again the fascia between the two makes the space for the median nerve because that's where the injection occurs. Here we can see the needle entering in an aeroplane fashion and the needle tip wants to make its way in between those two fascial planes and injection of the local anesthetic when successful will displace the median nerve away from the needle tip.